I, I think I'm six feet away from you and Sarah Major and I basically live together. So we're gonna go ahead and risk it. That and they say six feet apart and we were just on an airplane, you know, with 20 of our closest friends, you know, s sitting with each other. So good morning and uh, thank you for the warm, warm welcome to uh, beautiful Fort Polk, Louisiana. Oh. Excited to be here, excited to spend the day with you all, but more importantly, excited to share some information and also learn from you all. I'm gonna give a little bit of overview of HRC so you know what you can ask, not ask from us, and then give you an overview of what's in the TAG directorate, the Adjutant General Directorate, and then hand it over to my friends from the Enlisted Personnel Management Division. So with that, if we could go to the next slide. Um, so HRC, so what? Five directorates, TAG directorate is one of them, EP is one, OP is one, you have the Reserve Personnel Management Directorate, and then you also have Persons D. Think of all your systems and your technical support. And so that's what's in HRC. And so a lot of people, a little over 4,000, supporting about 5 million folks. And how the heck do you get 5 million? I heard it was about a million. But it's also families and it's veterans. So next slide. Within HRC, uh, a number of things that you probably don't know, you know, just some fast facts. Um, we'll stop on this one real quick. Some fast facts. So anything that's not assignments, if you see the HRC actions that you probably know, officer assignments and listed assignments are out there. Uh, but there's a lot of things that happen underneath the hood, behind the scenes, that the AG personnel that are here in the audience, can you, hands up, who's AG? Okay. You all are all part of that engine behind the scenes, and so we actually support you. And so a lot of times when you have higher headquarters out there and you're asking for stuff, ask like you're a part of that system, that engine. Don't ask like you're asking a favor. We work for you. And so if you get that attitude, especially from someone in the adjutant general directorate that you're getting a favor, we work for you. So remember that, you are a customer to us and we are there to serve you. So all of those actions you probably did not know happened in the Adjutant General Directorate. So if we could go to the next slide. So I got introduced, I'm the 62nd Adjutant General, your Adjutant General, and happy to do that. But I also have the unique opportunity to have two different hats. I'm gonna split up on this screen, on the other side of you, just so, cause I'm in your way and I apologize. Um, but I have two different hats. I'm the CG for the Physical Disability Agency. For leaders here and for AG, if you're having issues within the IDES process, someone's in the MEB and the PEB process, I have to brief the overall IDES process to Army senior leaders, but I can only affect the timeline for the PEB process. So once they get into the PEB, if you need help, prioritizing some of your cases, which by the way, Fort Polk right now is doing great as far as timeliness. You might not feel like it's going fast enough, but as it pertains to Army average, you're doing rather well. And then lastly, I'm the executive director for the Military Postal Service Agency. And so while you're worried about Army Postal and you go somewhere and you're like, how the heck does an APO get stood up in Poland when we go there or Kyrgyzstan? In PSA, we take care of it. And so it's a joint uh, agency. And so um, it's one of three reasons that I have the opportunity to get fired every single day. Um, but in all seriousness, we're gonna talk about the tag director today. So we're gonna go to uh, the next slide. And this is kind of where all those uh, different places exist, but I'm gonna take you straight into Kentucky and Fort Knox. Next slide. And so in one slide, if you had to take one slide away, this is your slide that you need to know what's in the Adjutant General Directorate. But before I get started, the Adjutant General Directorate is not just run by me. Um, I have seven different division chiefs, the six main divisions and my TAG Ops. But most importantly, I have my battle buddy, uh, Sergeant Major Williams. And so Sergeant Major John Williams is uh, my battle buddy and he's knocking it out of the park every day. Um, you know, actually, Sergeant Major, I was gonna brief this slide, but you kind of look comfortable on the stage. You know what? And they're recording today. So you know it would be really cool? You wanna, you wanna brief this? Of course, ma'am. 
I, you know what, I, I always, you know, look for those opportunities that you give me. And look, I had did an audible with the, yeah, public fair, they love me. I'm already winning here. Yeah, oh, we love these opportunities right here, no pressure. Your okay. eval's here about done. So, yes, you know, you're exactly right, ma'am, so hey, I have nothing to lose. All right, perfect, all right. If you're a leader, hey, can I get a people first? First. If you're a leader, can I get a people first? people first? If you love soldiers, can I get a soldier first? Soldiers first. All right, awesome, awesome. All right, because that's what we're all about, okay? So, with that being said, the Adjunct General Directorate, all right? So, I'm going to give you a confession, all right? Unfortunately, this is going on Facebook. Hopefully, that's the only social media because I don't want this to get out on Tic Tac or Snoop Chat. Hey, okay. Sergeant Major, it's tic yes, TikTok. TikTok. TikTok and Snapchat. And sna okay, ma'am. I know Facebook. All right. And I think, I think that's what we're going to get on. All right. So, all right. By, raise it, by, by, by raising your hands, who here knows anything about the Adjutant General Director? Put your hand down, Roger. All right. I got zero, almost zero hands. All right. Hey, guess what? Here go my confession. So probably around, you know, a good 20 years as an HR professional. All right. If you ask me, as an AG HR professional, what the Adjutant General, Adjutant General Directorate was or is, TAG, I would tell you, take a guess. Okay? Same thing. No. All right? No. However, I know, you like that? No. Okay, perfect. <laughs> However, okay, I want to go through the capabilities because I don't want you to make the same mistakes I did because I will tell you this, all right? These, in, within our division that I'm going to explain, all right, they take care of the readiness of soldiers, families, and veterans, right? You're gonna hear things coming from EPMD because a lot of the leaders, all right, a significant emotional event comes to fill in faces to spaces, all right? Even though they do a whole lot more than just that, even though that's their primary function, but mainly what comes out of the Andrew General Directorate is what you, what, how you take care of your soldiers once they get into your formations, okay? And we believe that, hey, you want to do it a whole lot faster than going around the world like I did. Okay, so with that being said, all right, just like you and your soldiers, I'm just letting you know that you are intertwined with the Adjutant General Directorate throughout your whole military life cycle. So whether if you're a soldier coming into initial entry, whether you're going into MAPS, whether you go to your reception, or just like you all as seasoned soldiers, when you're in process, you're entering into a variety of human resource systems, one of which is EMILPO, okay? And then in the very near future, we're talking about the integrated personal pay system army, okay? This gives me an opportunity to also plug because that all falls within the warehouse of our field services division, but they're also responsible for uh, about 26 military pay instructors that are teaching military pay fundamentals that your HR professionals, whether they're trained or not, are going to be the SMEs c come the time that we turn the switch on for release three, for IPSA and definitely release four when we go into you know central five military pay functions. All right, don't be scared. Don't be scared. All right. So moving to Army Service Center. So hey, throughout our whole military career, we know we gather a lot of documents and records, and we all know that you should know that it's maintained inside of what we call a system called IPERMS. Okay, that touch point is of course the Army Service Center. However, there the Army Service Center is dual headed. Okay, so I'm going to take this opportunity to get some feedback from you all. So we at HRC, we believe that when you call us, we're picking up on the first ring, and somebody's fired up and ready to answer your question. All the time. Oh, oh my goodness. I actually got a big laugh on that one. All right. Hey, I see some heads going east and west, you know, voraciously. Do you see the eyeballs rolling back in the head? I know. They're looking at their spine right now. Okay, ma'am? So, hey, the Army Service Center. If you were to dial 1-888-ARMY-HRC, okay, we have a team that's dedicated right there to field your inquiry. They will attempt to answer that question because they are fired up and excited to answer those questions, but that's their main job in life, okay? If they, they can't answer the question, they'll get it to the SME, and they'll close it out just like a trouble ticket. So if you can't contact anyone, that number, 1-888-ARMY-HRC, yes, I'm plugging that in there, okay? Has someone there that's dedicated to field your calls, but this is the big however, okay? Because we know that hey, when you hit our team members, hey, they're going to give you regulatory guidance, policy, doctrine, all right? Just understand that if, if it's something that you don't like or, you, or you, you, you want to ask questions about, please reach out to one of the leaders. We'll be happy. We'll be happy to answer your questions 
or engage it, okay? And I'm speaking on behalf of General Rampy, myself, and I, and I believe, I have no doubt, the EP team is saying the same thing, okay? All right, so Army Service Center. Moving to Soldier Program Services Division, we call that our Uber Essential Personnel Services in the sky. If you look to the right of that block, there's a lot of things, and hopefully my memory serves me correct today. But we're talking about they deal with Army Awards from the AM all the way to the Medal of Honor. They deal with voting. They, deal, they are our ID card program manager. They deal with education centers such as the Montgomery 9-11 GI Bill. Okay, I'm gonna throw out some acronym to SIGLI and CRSC. To SIGLI being Traumatic Service Group Life Insurance. All right, if you don't know anything about that, you are paying into it each and every month, all right? as well as combat-related special compensation, especially for those that are getting close to retirement and you don't want injuries or things of that nature not to be taxed during your retirement, all right? Good thing to know, but Soldier uh, Program Services Division deal with that. Also, other um, incentive pays, all right? Special duty pay, hazard duty pay, aviation uh, bonuses, things of that nature, all encompasses in the Soldier Program Services Division. Moving right along to evaluate sex and promotions. You may not know anything about the Adjutant General Directorate, okay? But the one thing you probably use, because you wouldn't be where you're at today, all right, is that particular division, okay? We're talking about they're dealing with enlisted promotions. A lot of changes dealing with the evaluation boards, a lot of future changes that are potentially coming. Oh my goodness, questions about OML management and how we do that, okay? Be happy to answer questions uh, dealing with that stuff. Uh, of course, officer promotions, evaluation, dealing with NCORs, OERs, academic evaluation ports. There are some uh, future changes that we're discussing dealing with that as well, non-commissioned officers. Uh, and then we have the DA secretary that responds for all panels and boards, okay, for the Army. Then we move to transition division. So when it comes that time, right, that we have to, you know, you know, move out of this green uniform and go into the civilian sector, transition uh, division is there to set us up for success. They are the proponent for the Army Transition Assistance Program. And then we conclude with our final responsibility of taking care of our service members at death and their families. Hey, one, one key point I'd like to point out is they are also responsible for the dignified transfers, all right, honoring those service members. Uh, and that falls within our Casualty Mortuary Affair Operation Division. And that is the reason why we say you are tagged from cradle to grave, tagged. Yes. Cute, 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 cute. Was, all right. Yes. All right. Thank you. Boom. Boom. All, right. all right. That was awesome. All right. I was Sergeant ready. Major. I mean, excellent. And you guys see why I have a great battle, buddy. Uh, but in all seriousness, a lot of information, but now you know where to go. And that's half the, half the battle, right? Knowing where to start mm. off. So your limit, your line of departure is with the TAG Directorate when it comes to everything essential personnel services. Two things I want to highlight and then uh, transition to a, a slide about talent management. He talked about the evaluation selections boards and so two big changes. If you don't ask today or have the opportunity and you have questions or you want us to do a follow-up in COPD or OPD, we've done it by MS Teams you know, around the world so we're willing to do it is what are the changes with the evaluation boards for NCOs? And this isn't just for NCOs, this is for officers. A lot of times as officers go, oh, well, NCOs, that's NCO business. It's not. You're the one writing their evaluations. And if you aren't doing it right, you are hurting them as they compete in these boards. It's everybody's business on both sides. The other thing is big changes with the officer boards. Biggest change is all any substantiated adverse information is now seen by the board. So I've sent out a couple tag sends. Um, I just did a tag talk that'll go out on YouTube soon about it. But if you're not versed in it, you need to know. And you might say, well, I don't have any adverse information. But you're a leader. You need to understand the process and the program. And if you're an adjutant general corps leader, you need to understand because people are looking at you and that's our credibility. Substantiated adverse information. Restricted fish is no longer restricted. Leaders, people advising leaders, have a discussion when you talk mm -hmm. about, am I gonna file this local, this GOMAR locally? Or am I gonna put it in their fish? I'll help them get it moved to the restricted fish. That's what we used to do. I'll, I'll help you get it moved in 90 days. It's no longer restricted. And you might say, why the heck is the Army doing it? 
The Army didn't choose to, the Army was ordered to. Department of Defense and Congress wants to know. And we work for Congress. So don't fight the program. It is where it is. If you have substantiated adverse information, you'll receive a notice in writing from our promotions branch if you're going in front of a board and you have the opportunity to write a letter, a rebuttal. Couple of recommendations. Number one, keep it short and succinct. If you haven't set a board, probably average time that someone looks at your file is two to three minutes. Although they can take as much time as they want, that's the average time. If you write 50 pages, you know, your manifesto on how messed up the system is, wasn't your fault, you might just tick them off. That's not what you want. I would own it. One to two pages on this is what it was, and this is why I still deserve to serve in the Army at the next level. And then have someone review it. And lastly, spell check is free. I know, hilarious, but I get some winners. And if I can't get past the fact that you're writing in some dialect I don't understand every other word, <laughs> it's going to be really hard for a board member. So um, that's the big, big changes. And then last thing I want to comment on is the Casualty Mortuary Affairs Division. Um, so yeah, they do some, some fun work, but unfortunately they deal with bad news every single day. So I've been the uh, Adjutant General for approximately 14 months now, and every day except for seven now on the daily casualty report, there's always a casualty except for seven days in the last 14 months. That's all compost, and that includes if someone's VSI very seriously injured or seriously injured. Seven days has it been zero of any casualties, VSI or SI. And you might think, well, golly, that's heavy. It is. But one thing you can do for yourselves and for your soldiers is S July and DD-93. Now, if I pull your stats and everybody's happy about their PRR, doing a great job, and they'll say, well, we're 100%. But are you 100% pencil whipped? Or are you 100% supporting a soldier? This is what I mean by that. Because I get to see the casualties, the after action is, well, the primary beneficiary is upset because it's getting split up you know, 50% to someone else. Or the spouse never updated, and it's going to an ex-spouse and not the current fiance. There's nothing I can do about it after the fact because it's a legal document. I'm asking for some intrusive leadership, really intrusive. So, Lieutenant, when's the last time someone asked you about your SGLI DD-93? Uh, last week, then. What'd they ask you? If I, I was updating it, man, and I had to make sure my spouse was on it before she goes to Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh. Okay. But if she does, you're covered. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I, should, I shouldn't assume. If, if your spouse, he or she, you know, <clears throat> is on it, that's good. But I think it's also, more importantly, are you asking the questions of that specialist? How much is your coverage? If you don't have $400,000 as your coverage, please reconsider. Yes, please. Because I've asked people before, and I found out, and unfortunately, one of our horrific cases, two people involved, one family's getting 400000 another family's getting 150000 and the 150000 family was the victim's family. Mm -hmm. It's a difference of $15, folks. $15. And if you're a young hero in the room and you think, it's not my time, talk to me. Every single day, I read about someone who it wasn't their time either through an accident, a self-imposed accident, or less likely right now, a combat casualty. And so I drove these dark roads last night, hmm. getting to the hotel. You know, we, we stopped short. Good thing Lieutenant Stevens is a good driver. You know, some truck like ran out and we mm -hmm. slowed down, but you know, that was three SULIs and DD-93s that almost got used. I'm just asking you to update it. And a lot of times soldiers think, I don't need to worry about it. I'm invincible. I'm telling you, you're not. And so I know you had a time in your career when someone had to stop you and say, hey, what are you doing about your SGLI and DD-93? And this might be a good story that relates to soldiers. Yes, ma'am. I'd be happy to share this because I can look in this room. I can tell none of you all were problem soldiers. All right. And you probably can look at me and say, you know what? That's our made to look squared away. All right, but it took a lot of years to get to this point. All right, so 
there I was. Here I am, Private Williams, okay? Hey, I came into the Army because hey, I really didn't have a lot of money, all right? And during those years, hey, the red and black Air Jordans came out. I couldn't get those. My sneakers had Velcro. I'm still talking to my behavioral specialists about that, all right? <laughs> I come into the Army and I think I'm smarter than everyone. You probably don't have any soldier that does that, all right? However, I went, to, and went in and I zeroed out my insurance. And I knew I could live off of Top Ramen and Snickers and get everything that I need, all right? But thank God I had a squad leader. Didn't know how he knew, but he came and said, hey, William, you need to follow me to the S1. Here's the form. Max it out. I said, Roger, Sergeant, all right? And then he said, it's not about you, high speed. It's about the loved ones you leave behind. Not Roger that, okay? And that's the type of leadership that we need to ensure that we're taking care of our soldiers. Cool? cool. All right. Thanks for sharing, Sergeant Major. So whether you're focusing in on, you know, this is my squad and having those discussions, you know, with your, your front office or your squad out in the field, that's one of the topics you should cover. And you might think, golly, that's really uh, intrusive, but that's, that's where we're at in our Army right now. Cool. We need leaders that are involved, engaged, and intrusive. And if someone doesn't like it, they can work somewhere else. Because if we're people first, we're people first in action, cool. not just in word. And so we just ask for your involvement in that. And then it also helps with the health of your organization and your involvement. Mm -hmm. And then someone knows that that's a little intrusive, but that means you really care. Not just about me, but about my family. So we can talk a little bit more about that when we take questions, but I wanna cover some of uh, the talent management uh, that's being covered in HRC right now. So next slide. So Army talent management, um, big changes, right? And so I'm not gonna read the slide to you, I'll let you take it, but you're gonna hear about Ask em from EPM, EPMD today. Uh, OPMD is not here, but AIM, the marketplace, we can talk about that. And really it's about transparency and it's about engagement, both leader engagement in the unit, marketing your unit, but also engagement from that officer trying to get a job. And if you think, man, it's a little bit frustrating and not everybody gets a match, 80 something percent are doing one-to-one -one matches. 80 something percent. And I will tell you, you see the, the statistic of the six to 60 percent it's helping, what does that mean? The top five percent, People are already marketing for them and pulling them in. The top 30, 40%, the bottom 30, 40% were already just, I'm gonna take what I can get or I can hand out you know, towels at the gym because it's available and no one's fighting over that position. But what is unique now in AIM is that 60 to 60%, the transparency in which you get to see those jobs that you never would have seen before and someone possibly considering you because they see your KSBs, those knowledge, skills, and behaviors that you can self-profess that I may not be able to query from another system. You know, as we transition into IPSA and we had that 25 point, you know, talent management um, capabilities that we can query, it'll help. But right now it's about you marketing yourself and about a unit being able to market why they need your talent at a location, like a great location like Fort Polk, Louisiana where your talent can be valued and you can be purposeful and you can get a number of key and developmental assignments. Uh, next slide. And so this is the big slide that uh, General Drew Human Resources Command uses. So going from the industrial age to an informational age. And you'll hear both EP and EP talk about the changes in which have occurred when it comes to talent management over the last two years has been more than we've ever done in the last 40. That's the amount of significant change, 10 times change that's occurring right now. But it's hard to keep up, you know, with that informational age and the technical changes. So we can talk about any of that that you want to talk about, um, big things that are going on. And I think I have one more slide. And then, you know, vision of AIM-2, and I talked about this. And going into that data-rich environment where we can query it rather than asking you, I need you to do more work, fill out the back of a resume, because I have no other way to know that you're into underwater basket weaving and you can speak Portugal. I mean, mm. there's no other way to query it right now, which is sad in today's age. 
So Ipsay will help us with that. And in the meantime, it's up to you to sell yourself and it's up to the unit to sell themselves to you.